Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at the First Baptist Church of Freehold on this last Sunday in the month of January as the year is rapidly going past. We're so glad and thankful that you decided to join us to make us part of your worship as we continue along in this epiphany season and draw this first month of 2024 to a close. To all of our guests and first-time worshipers worshiping with us, we hope and pray that you feel the presence of God in and amongst and throughout our worship this morning. And to those watching and worshiping with us at home, we hope and pray that you've had a blessed and fruitful week. And we're so thankful that you decided to join us on this soggy January morning. I invite you to rise as you're able and join together with me in this morning's call to worship. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Praise the Lord. Your work is full of honor and majesty, and your righteousness endures forever. The works of your hands are faithful and just. All your precepts are trustworthy. Compelled by our need for renewal, we come to hear a word from the Lord. Compelled by God's grace and mercy, we come to worship the Lord. And let us begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, Come Christians Join to Sing. Let us join together in saying our unison prayer. Mighty God, we come into your presence with expectancy in our hearts. We gather as a beloved community, each of us called by name to usher in your kingdom and proclaim your gospel. We know that there are many unclean spirits, both visibly and silently at work among us. Speak to us, so that by your authority we are healed. Work within us, so that we might be made clean by your word and renewed in your spirit. Amen.
You may be seated in the presence of God. Are there any announcements from the congregation this morning? Um, the first announcement is a reminder that Tuesday, two days from today, we will be having our afternoon service. Um, we have residents from Monmouth Crossing who will be joining us as well. So I encourage all of you, if you would like to come out, if you know anyone who has been unable to come to our Sunday morning service, please reach out to them and invite them, ask them to join us. And um, maybe some who are staying home today because of the terrible weather outside, uh, please feel free to uh, worship with us this Tuesday, January 30th at 2 p.m. And we will be doing a lot of favorite hymns, uh, including the one that I uh, started with for the Prelude, Blessed Assurance. So we'll have some nice uh, uh, favorite hymns maybe that we haven't sung in a while. The other announcement I wanted to make is, it was my understanding that we had a birthday on Thursday of a member here in the choir. So I thought we could say happy birthday. <laughs> Thomas said it was not me. <laughs> but if we could sing happy birthday to Ray. If you would join us all. No, she's not. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ray. Happy birthday to you. Are there any other announcements from the congregation this morning? Two weeks from this Sunday or, or today on February 11th, we will have our annual business meeting after church. All are encouraged to attend on that Sunday as we look over a year that has gone past and look forward to what God has in store for us in 2024. So again, that is February 11th after worship, our annual business meeting. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, I just have a couple of reminders. After worship this morning, we'll have our deacons meeting this upcoming Wednesday is our next Bible study session at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. We will go over chapter 2 of Barbara's text, Finding Jesus in the Psalms. This upcoming Thursday is our next choir rehearsal here at the church at 4.30 p.m. You are encouraged to sign up for flowers to adorn our altar in the sign-up sheet in the Manalapan Avenue vestibule. And as we look forward to the arrival of Lenten season, which is a little over two weeks away, our Ash Wednesday service will be here at the church on February 14th at 7 o'clock p.m. So all are invited and encouraged to attend as we kick off the Lenten season. And now let us transition to our children's moment this morning. Who is your favorite superhero? You might think Batman or you might like Superman or someone really strong like the Incredible Hulk. Or you might have a favorite that is out of the blue, like one of the X-Men, or the Flash, or even Black Widow. All of these superheroes have powers that are unique 
to them to help them fight crime wherever they live. And in every story, there's always them as the hero fighting a really, really bad guy who is out to cause trouble. And the reason I mentioned superheroes as part of our children's moment this morning is because we have a superhero of our own in Jesus that in our story that we'll hear later fights a demon, a really, really, really bad guy and vanquishes him or destroys him. And this is just the first of many that Jesus will encounter throughout the course of his ministry. And just like the superheroes that we know and love, we are called to also love Jesus and know that he possesses powers of the Almighty. He can defeat any and all of our enemies. And like our favorite superheroes, is always there to save the day. So I encourage you as you think about your favorite superhero, don't forget to mention Jesus somewhere on your list. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your dwelling among us, coming to fight the bad guys of our day and age, and to save the day and save us for all eternity. May we see you and know that your strength and your love protect and watch over us every step of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we transition to this time of prayer, are there any prayer requests from the congregation this morning? Prayers for the Judy, Judy Krause and her entire family and the loss of her nephew, who we prayed for, and we pray God's comfort in this time of grief and celebrate his life as we celebrate his memory and the imprint that he left upon all who knew him. Prayers for Roy as he goes and speaks in front of Congress to speak upon the persecutions of the Christians in Burma at this pivotal time. So we pray for safe traveling mercies and that God guide his words and continues to guide his heart. Prayers for Marie as she undergoes a surgical procedure to remove a tumor by her eye we, this upcoming Tuesday. So we pray for the doctors, the nurses, those that are caring for her before, during, and after the procedure, and that all might be well and that there are no complications. Uh, two prayer concerns. Um, last night, I got a phone call from Arden uh, to let me know that Leslie was uh, taken to the hospital uh, last night. Um, they did keep her overnight uh, for some tests and things. Um, it sounds like it may be complications to an all-day chemo treatment that she had had on Friday, um, but please keep uh, or continue to keep Leslie and Arden and their whole family um, in your prayers. Um, the other prayer concern is for my mom, Linda. Many of you know Linda. And my mom tested positive on Thursday. So if you could keep her and, and all the residents um, in your prayers. Um, I'm playing a lot of her favorites in the service today. This is, I know she's able to watch the service, 
even though I'm not able to visit her. So, uh, you know, please uh, continue to keep her in prayers and, and others who are uh, homebound. And this can be one of their uh, um, connections with all of us uh, being able to worship and uh, see our service here. Are there other prayer concerns? Let us now take a few moments to go to the Lord in a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. O God, who comes to us in every moment and every season of our lives, we give you thanks and praise for all those who are gathered here as part of this divine encounter with you, physically and virtually, gathered with saints near and far. We pray that you bless us and keep us Hold us in the palm of your hands until we gather again in the fullness of your love and your grace. Lord, you have heard the prayers of your people this morning, prayers for so many that are in need of medical care and attention, for friends who are preparing for major surgeries this upcoming week, for those loved ones, those close to our hearts who were taken to emergency rooms throughout this past week and even overnight, for loved ones, family that are continuing to be impacted by COVID as it rears its head once more in this winter season. We pray for your hands of protection, for your hands of love to surround and envelop us, O oh God. Be with those caretakers, as care providers, as they tend to the sick, as they tend to those who are going into medical procedures, who are in the midst of their recovery and rehabilitation. For those who are the most vulnerable among us, may you hold them close to your heart. We pray for successful procedures. We pray for the COVID disease to sleep swiftly bodies of those who are even unaware that it is impacting their lives. We know in this season of love that is yet on the horizon, that there are those who are mourning, who are grieving the loss of loved ones near and dear to their hearts. We lift up Judy Krause and her entire extended family, O oh God. We pray that you comfort and be with that family in those moments of the silent stillness, when there are no words to say, when tears flood their hearts and flow from their bodies. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present with you, O oh God. And so we celebrate 
in the midst of grief. We pray for our homebound members, those who are watching and worshiping with us virtually, who are unable to physically travel. We continue to hold Terry as she continues her recovery. We pray for her strength. We pray for a renewed hope to cling upon her spirit. In this world of hate, of evil, of violence, of conflict, of persecution, we give thanks for the people who have answered the call, your servants who are standing in the gap and providing a voice to the voiceless. We pray, O oh God, for Roy as he prepares to go in front of those with the highest power in the land and tell the people about the persecution that's happening to your people in Burma. We pray that his words might change their hearts of stone so that all might be safe, all might be protected. And we pray for all those that are impacted by war, by devastation, by persecution, by destruction, that we might be doers of justice and we might bring peace to the nations. Oh God, there is much that has gone unspoken from our lips, but you hear it from the depths of our hearts. Help us and call us to do your work so that your spirit might flutter the nations and flood and overwhelm your people. We pray all this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of giving, again, you are reminded that you have a QR code if you would like to give online. For those of you watching and worshiping, virtually the QR code will appear on your screen during the offertory time. As well as you can bring in your financial gifts into the basket as the ushers are prepared to lead us in our time of offering. May we be reminded that God truly loves a cheerful giver. May the ushers come forward and lead us as we give.
us pray. O oh God, for all that you have given us, we take this time to give you back a portion of that which is already yours. Use these gifts and multiply them so that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us continue along in our worship as we sing Blessed Jesus at your word. of God. As we come to this time of hearing the words of Scripture, let us continue by hearing the opening words of Mark's Gospel, beginning in the 21st verse. Hear these words with me. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? a new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. 
May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of the word. As we come to this time of hearing the preached word, let us pray. O God, give us eyes to see anew, ears to hear afresh, a heart to be warmed and a spirit to be transformed, so that we might not leave this place ever the same. Amen. 
contained within the Gospels, we encounter a lot of different moments of Jesus doing acts of universal good for others. Whether on an individual basis or to the masses, Jesus gives life to those whom he ministers to in more ways than one. And often we see universal good done for others in our day and age as well. From the ones that get reported on worldwide news outlets to the small random acts of kindness we experience in those moments where we don't expect it. Good deeds are happening at any given moment. As people of faith, we are called to be more and more like Jesus each day. And I would surmise that included in this, it's doing universal good acts for those who are our neighbors. As we continue along in the opening chapter of Mark's gospel, we have fast-forwarded just a little bit of time as Jesus and his four disciples have come to Capernaum, a small fishing village on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee that will eventually be the home base for Jesus' ministry. Jesus has been invited to be a guest rabbi on one particular Sabbath, and so he, along with his four disciples, make their way to the local synagogue. And there Jesus did what he was invited to do, teach from the scriptures. But Jesus' teaching hit a little deeper on that day. For the more that Jesus taught, the more that everyone was amazed. The members of the synagogue, the scribes, even the visitors who were there because the regular rabbi was not teaching today. This is no ordinary carpenter with a radical message, as some may have thought to themselves. This teacher teaches with authority, and I mean authority. For Jesus' authority is radically different than that of the rabbi, the designated sole halakhic authority for Capernaum. Jesus' authority is radically different from any of the scribes around the geographical area or any area for that matter, all of whom had the best training in the best schools that Denary could buy at the time. We know that Jesus' authority is both figuratively and literally not of this world. And in the midst of the people's amazement, Mark tells us that a man walked into the synagogue just as Jesus was finishing his teaching. Nothing out of the ordinary that someone sneaks into the back of the building right before the closing hymn, and it's not that daylight savings time random switch Sunday that we'll experience in March. March 10th, to be exact, for those of you who might be wondering. But on the contrary, this man seemed on the outside to be fine. All the people around him, a local from the village, saw him and thought nothing of it. But within him, was a demonic spirit that was controlling and destroying significant aspects of his life. Day after day after day. 
And this man, or rather the hostile spirit inside him, cried out in a violent outburst, Jesus, what do we have in common? Nothing is the answer to that question. And that would make sense. In this first instance in Mark's gospel of the cosmic battle between good and evil, the battle lines have been drawn in the Galilean sand. Jesus, the Son of God, first of his name, breaker of chains and bringer of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And on the other hand, Satan, the emperor of all evil, the despot of destruction, the one who finds delight in the downfall of humanity. Two ends of the cosmic spectrum with the universe hanging in the balance. The demonic spirits continue in its visceral, verbal attack. Have you come to destroy us, you Nazarene? The demons know that their time is numbered. The moments of possession are drawing to a close because they know not only who Jesus is, but we're expecting his arrival into the world. They had heard from the prophets. They had heard John proclaim his message. The presence of the Savior is the torment of the devils because they know the power and authority with which the Holy One of God not only speaks, but acts. The demons know that unlike all the other scribes in Galilee, the ones with the greatest of teachings. Jesus has the power to destroy not just the one contained within this man, but all of the demonic spirits in the known and unknown world. Is in the 25th verse of our text where the exorcism takes place. Jesus, having heard the words of the Spirit, speaks once more with authority. On this Sabbath day, Jesus will perform a life-giving, life-transforming act. He rebukes the man, rebukes the Spirit inside him, and calls out, Silence, demon. Come out of him at once. In an instant, in the midst of the silence that hushed over the crowd, the man begins to convulse violently. The man screams equally as violently as the demonic spirit comes out, spewing from his mouth. The spirit departs from the synagogue, most certainly to find another body to possess and control. But the man stands there free from the spirit. The people are amazed, shocked, at a loss for words, even more so than when they were listening to Jesus teach at the beginning of our text. They not only heard the authority of Jesus' words through his teaching, but were witnesses to it with their own eyes. And as Mark brings our text to a close, the fame and popularity of Jesus increased a hundredfold after this exorcism. As the kids say, he became a viral sensation overnight. His followers increased into the thousands. The people who witnessed this first miracle carry the news all throughout the village. 
Jesus has this new teaching, one with authority. Even the unclean spirits obey his word. The story of the demonic spirit and Jesus' victory spreads across the Galilee as fast as humanly possible in this pre-internet world. And the authority by which he speaks and acts will create euphoria and bliss for some and grave concern for others. Last week, I asked to invite us to think about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And this week, I invite you to think about the question that was asked. What do you have in common with Jesus? Do you share in the work that Jesus has come to do here on earth? Or do you share in the work of those that Jesus has come to cast out of our world? There are a lot of demonic spirits that occupy spaces within the lives of the faithful. There are a lot of unclean spirits that find residence and safe haven in holy spaces. As I mentioned when we remembered our baptisms, there are a lot of those who were baptized but do not have the Spirit of God contained within them. Those who profess God, but in the words of Billy Flynn, should probably stay where they are better acquainted. One could probably say that the church universal needs an exorcism so that it cannot just recognize the holiness of God, but embody it again in life-giving ways. So what is the good news that we are to hear this morning? the good news that we cling to as we hear this story of Jesus anew. Friends, Jesus has come to this sacred space to teach with authority and proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. Jesus has come to this sacred space to call out and cast out the unclean spirits hidden in plain sight, to drive out the demons from among us so that we might be restored, renewed, and free to follow him anew. Jesus is calling us to hear his voice. What do we have in common with Jesus. We have in common the ability to teach and proclaim the gospel just as Jesus did because that is what casts out demons then and now. Teaching and proclaiming the gospel just as Jesus did is what brings freedom and liberation for people. Right now, just as it did throughout the Gospels and all the course of human history. For we have chosen, we have decided to follow Jesus. And we have been called to do what he did while he was here. To not just speak with this authority, the spirit of God which flows in and through us but also act and do likewise. For we have the power and authority to do acts of justice, to care for the poor and marginalized around us, to speak on behalf of those who have 
been persecuted. To set people free from whatever unclean spirits have bound them up. We are called to proclaim that the kingdom is here right now. And that Jesus has come once again. We are called to tell the unclean spirits to be silent. For the spirit of God is at work and is still speaking. What do we have in common with Jesus? We have in common the work that Christ began and that continues in and through us. So may you go forth from this place, continuing in that good work, so that through you, through me, through us, Universal good can and will be done throughout the world, now and forever. Amen. May you rise as you are able and let us join together in singing our closing hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
thank you for being a part of our worship here at the First Baptist Church of Freehold on this final Sunday of the month of January. Just one announcement. There is a men's breakfast this upcoming Thursday at 8.30 p.m. at Gus's Diner. And just a reminder about the deacons that are meeting after worship this morning. May you hear these words for our benediction. The Savior of all people has brought his peace to you. Now go and tell the story, for others need it too. To every land and nation, ring out the gospel call. Proclaim that Christ is risen and grants his peace to all. Amen. Thank you.